All right, crew, today I wanted to talk about the difference between workstation GPUs and gaming GPUs and kind of just educate everyone across the board. Now, the price comparison is astronomical. I mean, if you look at like an RTX A6000, you might spend $5,000 on that GPU when the equivalent performance of that in the gaming world might be like a $3090, $1,500. And so you're thinking like, well, what's all the extra hype for on this A6000? It's a workstation card. So let's jump into this. Let's jump into the like the three most uh, common workstation cards on the NVIDIA side and maybe the three most common uh, uh, gaming cards um, on the NVIDIA side as well and just compare the two. So let's compare some, some GPUs right off the bat. We have the three uh, workstation uh, graphics cards from NVIDIA, the RTX A4000, A5000, and A6000 series. And we're going to take a look at the uh, the gaming equivalents of those, the RTX 3070, the 3080, and the 3090. Starting off with the A6000, it's a workstation card, um, essentially designed to run CAD programs and, and, and a multitude of different programs, I should say, not just CAD programs, but um, lots of editing software, um, graphically intense software, or maybe computationally intense software. And, uh, you know, it's equivalent as far as powerhouse goes is like a 3070, an RTX 3070. And you're thinking like, well, why, why the double the price, right? An RTX 84,000 is like 15 to $1,800. And then you look at like an RTX 3070 and you're thinking like, well, that's a whole lot less. What's going on here? At the end of the day, workstation cards are designed to run software like CAD, like editing software much more stable than like a gaming computer or a gaming um, GPU. But as far as performance goes, they're essentially almost the same card, right? Granted that workstation cards run about 10% slower on average than 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 their gaming counterpart um, and maybe have some different types of components in there. Uh, at the end of the day, they're, they're 90% the same minus the driver. The driver for a workstation card specifically to run, specifically designed to run workstation applications and maybe different work workstation drivers are written for different applications, right? So you might have two or three drivers or more, depending on the application that you're using. Whereas with the gaming driver, you kind of have one, you kind of have two. You have like the gaming driver and you have like the general driver for it, right? So driver specific um, applications for workstation cards versus uh, gaming cards. Now jumping up to the RTX A5000, again, a step up from the 4000 with 24 gigs of RAM to its counterpart, its processing, power processing counterpart, the RTX 3080. Now, as far as computing processing goes, right, they're uh, very similar. I would say still the 3080 takes a lead on the processing power because when it's a gaming GPU, it doesn't have to be as stable as say a workstation GPU. But then we start seeing the astronomical difference in the amount of RAM in the card. And this is because that some applications, say like SolidWorks or Visualize or Maya, or anything that's using um, any sort of poly nerve surfaces or or, or um, mesh data or um, uh, point cloud, etc., tend to have extremely large files or can get to, to very large files. And most of those applications load the data to RAM and therefore require a lot of VRAM on your graphics card in order to use those applications. And that's why as you start stepping up the tier, you see these huge RAM increases, right? So as far as performance goes, right? still going to give the edge to the 3080 over the A5000, right? It's just the way it is. Um, now looking at the RTX A6000 versus the 3090 or the 3090 Ti, um, you know, the, the 48 gigs of VRAM is just essentially unmatched, right? 40, 48 gigs is absurd. But recently I was helping a customer uh, with their rendering project and I ran into about 25 gigs of of a uh, file to open, which means that we would have even surpassed the RTX A6000 and far surpassed any of the gaming GPUs. So for companies in those like really specific situations, um, which is like almost any engineering company, I mean, like realistically, um, you know, you're going to need that extra power. And that's really where the A6, A6000 comes in. Um, now I do have an A6000 and I have compared games with my, with my uh, friend who's running a 3090. And the FPS performance is usually on average about 10% less, you know, given any game running at like 5K, 5K by 2K or 4K. Um, I'm missing about 10% on the gaming side, but then have all the benefits on the CAD workstation side, right? So all in all, we have workstation cards that are 
sometimes double or triple or quadruple the price of their counterpart gaming cards. But the reality is if you're in the enterprise environment and you're running high-end software and you're running these applications that take maybe hours and hours and hours to render, or you're, you could be exposed to losing work that, that would mean, you know, costly um, rework or just like lost man hours, that workstation cards are really worth the, you know, the juice is worth the squeeze. In fact, there are some applications that require you to have workstation cards or your, your, some of the aspects of the software are actually stripped away because they would cause maybe too many faults or errors or crashes and so on. Also, um, if you are experiencing a lot of crashes or, or errors within your programs, um, chances are that, that um, those like workstation type programs actually need a workstation type card, which is why you're encountering all those errors. So troubleshooting those things often looks like, hey, you have a gaming graphics card, it's time for you to upgrade to a workstation graphics card because I think that'll fix a lot of your issues. Now, about 95% of the time, that's always the case that it does fix some issues. Um, sometimes, sometimes not all of the issues are fixed, but other issues are fixed, right? Which is always good that we're tackling some of them. Um, but generally speaking, workstation cards are for enterprise applications and gaming cards are for gaming applications, right? Gaming cards are really good at showing things, you know, extremely fast at high FPS with you know, lots of explosions and particles flying everywhere. And workstation cards are really good at showing things very accurately, right? And they, we're not worried about, you know, frames per second really on, on gaming cards or, or on, on workstation cards in enterprise applications, right? It's, it's not something we have to worry about. We're looking for detail and quality, reliability. So that's really what you're paying for at the end of the day, right? Between a workstation card and a gaming card. Um, you know, here, let's take a look at NVIDIA's website just to show you the different drivers here real quick. We have the RTX series, and then we have the GeForce series. Um, the the GeForce series used to be the gaming series, and the Quadra used to be the workstation series. Now, what they've done is they've reorganized how they name their cards from workstation to gaming, and that's found under the RTX section. And so you have the RTX series, um, RTX series, uh, desktop series, like desktop or notebook, and then you can select whether or not you have, uh, you know, the the workstation card, uh, which workstation card you have, or you know, go to the um, GeForce cards, and you can see the RTX branding again with the 30 series, 20 series, and so on. So a little a little confusing the way they have it lined up now. Um, I think the easy thing to remember is that if you um, are out on workstation card, it'll have this A in front of it and that kind of that kind of emulates that it's a workstation card versus a gaming card so you go to geforce look at the gaming cards they don't have the a in front of it so there you have it that's my take on workstation cards versus uh gaming cards the reason why you might jump into a workstation card versus a gaming card and then also the comparisons across the board like really what are you paying for what kind of power are you getting um and if you're not totally involved in enterprise grade, enterprise grade software. Um, spending extra money on a workstation card won't get you any extra performance, right? You're just spending more money. So, uh, so yeah, I know the gaming cards are hard to get right now because of scalpers, but that doesn't mean to go out and buy an A4000 or A5000 because you feel like it costs more, therefore you'll get more, right? It's a different piece of hardware for a different application. Cool. Hey guys, I can't thank you enough if you watch this all the way through. Thank you very much. I appreciate you and I appreciate your time and I appreciate you willing to watch more of my videos. I couldn't do without you. So stay curious. Fight on.